Okay, great. So this is the title of my presentation today, Movements Building for Abortion Rights. Well, this is a small introduction. I'm Tamara. My pronoun is she. I'm 22 years old and I'm, it's pronounced Uruguay. And well, I'm showing you in the map because this is a very small country in Latin America. So you have an idea. This would be Brazil. This would be Argentina. And this tiny country over here is where I live. It's Uruguay. And it's in this continent over here, Latin America. And well, so that you can later access, because this presentation will be made available, I have the different participation spaces so that you have an idea. Well, I will be asking you to tell me this, so please prepare for that. Okay, so I belong to Women and Health in Uruguay. As you can see here, MISU, MISU is just the, the acronym in Spanish. Well, this is a feminist non-governmental organization working for sexual and reproductive rights. I'm also part of a youth group that works with MISU. These are young female activists or people with uh, different sexualities. I'm also part of the Companion Network for Abortions in Uruguay. I belong to the Las Lilas Network. And recently in Las Lilas, the national network, we joined the regional network called Red Compañera or Network Compañera. This is a regional network that brings together the different collective organizations that provide companionship in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean. And lastly, even though this does not have social media and is still not public, but this is so that you know that it exists uh, or that is a space that is being currently built. This is a youth network for the right for abortion in Latin America and the Caribbean. And this is an articulation that is being has been created since last year to participate with greater or act, more actively participate in international spaces such as Yana. And well, if you think that's okay, we could have a short round of introductions and I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And I just like you to tell me your name, the country that you come from and your age. And of course you can do it in English. I understand English. Uh, Tamara, I can start. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I'm Carol. Um, I, and I'm from the Philippines. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Tamara and everyone else. My name is Apurva. I'm 33 years old and I'm from India. It's really nice to be here and be connected with all of you working on this really important issue. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Gauri. I'm from India and I'm 25 years old. It's nice meeting you all again. Thank you. I'm Joy Katwesige from Uganda. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lina from the Netherlands. I'm uh, really uh, glad to be here as well. 
Hi. Hello, everyone. This is Joy from Uganda, SRHR advocate and, and one of the young persons rep representing Reproductive Health Uganda, Hoima branch, and Miss Confidence Punyoro. Thank you for being here, and I'm so glad as we are advocating for abortion in, you, in, in the whole world. Thank you. Another person? Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Amanda. I'm Amanda, an advocate for HRSR services. And I'll be educated as well, working with the actor. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Um, there's still Natalia, Kelvin, Shuri. Hi everyone, this is Judy from Kenya. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Esther, hello, my name is Esther Wente from Kenya, 27 years old. Anyone else? Um, or maybe we can keep going. Bueno. Okay, so I'll continue unless anyone else wants to speak. Okay. So I'll share my screen once again. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Well, I'll continue with the workshop so that we can keep moving forward. What I have here for you so that you can investigate and get to know the different sources of information and you can learn about the history of abortion rights movements. I was talking to the colleagues that invited me to this workshop and they were telling me that I was very young and beyond knowing a lot about the history, I do not know all of the history or if I do know the history, it's more about what's happened in Latin America and the Caribbean. So I look for different networks and different organizations that are part of the movement for abortion rights, not just in Latin America and the Caribbean, but around the world. And here I have some links where you can go in later because you'll get this PDF. You, we have the Latin American Consortium Against Unsafe Abortion, the Red Salud of Latin American Women and the Caribbean, the International Campaign. Here you have it in English, Women's Global Network for Reproductive Rights. This is regional monitoring on the Montevideo Consensus. This is one of the most progressive regional consensus where sexual and reproductive rights are recognized as human rights and this monitoring follows the implementation of that consensus and this is related to sexual education the right to safe abortion and others here we have the boston women collective this is what we in spanish know about no and we have some links and they talk more about their story. They have a book that is called Our Bodies, Our Lives. And this is a book that gave a lot to the feminist movement in general, and of course, sexual and reproductive rights too. And it even helped with 
see looking at medicine with a different perspective and the international health uh, coalition that became FOSS and IPAS and some others that well and if you have others that I wasn't able to fight you can look up or you can share it in the chat or maybe you can share it amongst yourselves later so let me give you some political context before i continue with this workshop because i think it is important to consider this these are the advances of the authoritarian conservative governments and the increase of anti-right movements anti-gender anti-abortion and the uh, values such as nation, family, and property. And this is a very authoritarian system and extremely conservative. The weakening of human rights as an ethical and political framework to guarantee of guarantees by the states. And this is something that isn't just happening in Latin America and the Caribbean, but around the world. An increase in opposition forces to women's rights, sexual diversity, indigenous peoples. I have the wrong translation here. And they can be, and we can talk about the different ways to name this population and then uh, other gender dissidents and Afro populations. And there is an increase in insecurity and this is used as a justification to militarize societies and repress social movements and protests and lastly a crisis well a health crisis uh, because of course we had the pandemic and it looks like it's going away very slowly but the consequences are still felt and there's setbacks in social inequalities and violations of human rights. So I wanted to tell you a little bit more now about Latin America and the Caribbean so that you know the decriminalization and legalization context in the 21st century. So we have Mexico first in Mexico City in 2000 six and then we've had Oaxaca, Veracruz, Hidalgo, Bajo California and the last win in Sinaloa in 2022 in Uruguay it was legalized in 2012 in Chile in 2017 with the three causes but I don't know if you're aware that now they're in a constitutional process and the right to abortion is already going in for approval. Argentina is famous. And this is with the green wave and the green handkerchiefs. Colombia in 2006 with the three causal factors. But then at the end of last year, we have approval of abortions till the 24th week. And I wanted to mention the countries where we still there's still total criminalization of abortion here in Latin America and the Caribbean. These would be Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and the Dominican Republic. And here you can look at the situations of access to abortion. And this is called the Mira que te miro monitoring. And we have some abortion policies here. And it's in Spanish. I tried to find it in English, but I couldn't. But I mean, I still think it's easy to read because it has a lot of images and graphs and it's pretty useful. And but well, this is about understanding that there's a broad diversity and there's colleagues that come from India, Uganda and Kenya, and they have very different contexts. But what I put here is a Jamboard so that you can 
give your contributions or answers to these two questions that are here. Why are abortion rights movement important? Or at least why do you believe they're important? Or what are your ideas about why they're important? And what achievements do you remember this movements have made in your countries? Maybe there was a win, a law, uh, maybe you were gonna, you were able to hold some sort of setback where you'd be able to change some sort of legislative context. Was there meetings with decision makers? Any sort of advances that you have achieved that you would like to share? So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I will put the link for the Jamboard in the chat and then we can go there. Oh, okay. It's already there. Thank you. Ay, perdón, no estoy teniendo como unos problemitas. Pero estoy viendo que varias personas se están conectando. I'm sorry, I'm having a few tech problems, but I see that many people are connecting and you can add your answers. I'm going to share my screen. There we go. So if you go here, this little part over here, you can put in a post that you can change the color. And then you'll have the posters right there. And I'll give you five minutes and you can add your contributions. We have one already. And here we have more and you can write things and this is what achievements do you remember in this movement making in your country or region and I have the sticky notes up here and maybe it'll be easy or you can click here and edit and write down your comment the, the three dots over here I mean I my screen is in Spanish but uh, here, you know, it would say edit and you can write down whatever you think is the right answer. There's a third page, but that's just blank. So I'll give you five minutes to do this so that you can. So we'll use three minutes so that you can add your answers, your ideas. And of course, I put this here so that you can add it, but if you want to add a comment to the chat or something else, or maybe we can have another space for interaction, but let me give you some minutes so that you can think about the answers and answer the two questions.
Por las dudas, si alguien no vio el chat, ahí la compañera estaba eh, diciendo. And in case you didn't look at the chat, we have a colleague saying that if you cannot go into the chat Jamboard, you can put it in the chat and we'll add it to the Jamboard. And you also have the two questions written down here in the chat. So if you're not able to go to the Jamboard, please just put your comment in the chat. And maybe if you would like to answer this second question, and I have our call, we have our colleague from the Philippines adding a comment and answer. Buenísimo, ahí hay varias respuestas. Great, I see that we have many answers and we have an answer in the chat that we will add here to the Jamboard. Ahí está, está la... Wow. <ríe> Me encanta que estén agregando tantas razones. Yo les I arreglo. love how everyone is adding sticky notes. I can, I'll fix them up on the page. Bueno, eh... ah, buenísimo. Ahí fueron agregando. Me encanta. Hay alguien... Great. I see that someone is drawing. I'm sure that's unintentional. Great, so we'll continue. And if anyone wants to add anything, you're welcome, but we have enough now. I'm going to read these in English because it will be easier in my head and it also be easier for you to understand. We have many answers, so why are abortion right movements important? About safe abortion that is a human right, for a more female and equal world, to teach religious leaders, policymakers, community that people have rights and we have to protect the life of people, not to have them discriminated, concert effort, in furthering access to safe abortion, basic human rights of bodily autonomy. They are voices in influencing policies that deal with sexual and reproductive rights, 
to build a more equitable world, to provide and push for abortion rights, and also provide information around abortion and abortion service. It addresses social justice and public health issues, especially in countries where abortion is restricted. Movements support the rights of those who are in need of these rights and need protection from their rights being violated. They enhance body autonomy. It supports both partners for better, for better arrangements in, in children's possession. And in, in, this other, in this other question, we have, I don't have a, a specific achievement in mind, but the movement here have brought together various marginalized groups, such as sex workers, gender non-binary, non-binary person, young people and adolescent girls, etc. That's a big achievement is that's uh, uh, a really difficult task. Improve access to abortion service. My country never had a movement that I know of because abortion have been legal on broad conditions since 1971. Philippines draft discrimination bill last uh, 2021 count the law oh, sorry I, I will make this a little bit bigger oh. han hecho un montón de, de aportes muy buenos muy enriquecedores I see a lot of contributions very well. Related to abortion in India has widened the scope of ability, availability of safe abortion services and newspaper coverage, help in information dissemination in rural, rural areas. Movement have achieved the aim of awareness surrounding the topic of abortion, specifically addressing the myth. It has encouraged young people to increase the chances of living and continuing to do other activities in like study chances and avoid neglect from parents. Count, sorry, I, 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 I forgot about this. Count, the law was brought as a population control measure and to protect the medical community from criminal, criminal proceedings from carrying out abortions. Well, you have a lot of uh, achievements. Muchas gracias por, por, todos los, por todos los aportes. Thank you very much for all your contributions. Clearly, there are many reasons the movement for abortion rights is important. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I apologize. I'm allergic and I have to blow my nose, so I will be turning off my mic for just a second. Todo bien. Disculpe, pero soy una persona muy alérgica y de mañana mucho más. Eh... I'm back. I'm sorry. I'm very allergic, especially in the mornings. So thank you very much for your contributions. They're very valuable and most of the things everything that you're saying here and in the chat is true and for example i this this comment right here caught my attention this is something that happened a lot in uruguay with the younger generations that in uruguay well it was legalized in 2012 and a lot of us did not know about the movement for the rights for abortion rights or at least compared to the movements in Argentina and the green wave and everything that was happening we thought that we hadn't had a movement but these things don't happen by themselves governments and parliaments do not usually just start providing this right there's always goes hand in hand with 
what the feminist movements have been able to achieve, or at least abortion rights movements have been able to achieve. So when I saw this, I thought this was interesting. And if you have a win without a fight, well, this is may something please, that doesn't uh, really happen. So, uh, may I please interrupt you for a moment here? Uh, so that was my co comment. I'm from India and my, okay. actually the space was, was limited. So I wrote, I, uh, I pasted another sticky note saying that, you know, the reason that this law was brought was because, um, because of population control and it wasn't wow. wasn't rights based and that explains why we have such poor access in our country you know despite a fairly liberal law you're allowed to have abortions uh, it, it's it's uh, there, there's been a recent amendment that's increased the gestation period to 24 weeks and but there's been no mass movement there's been no uh, real women's movement of poor women rural women women who need abortion the, the most uh, to achieve this uh, and that's basically because our foundation was this law that we already had in 1971, but that was guided by uh, by uh, by things like population control and this uh, need to protect healthcare workers because there's a law criminalizing abortions unless um, you know the procedure falls under the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act 1971. Wow, muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sí, está. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yes, okay, that makes a difference. That's why I ask these questions, especially it's because it's difficult for us young people to know about what's happening around the world, and these contributions are fundamental, so thank you very much. And yes, of course. Well, I'm going to continue because otherwise we will not have enough time. I want to tell you about one of the biggest strategies that we have in the abortion rights movement, and that is the 28th, the September 28th campaign. This is a campaign that is agreed upon in the fifth Latin American Caribbean feminist meeting. EFLAC, here I know these are the, this is the acronym in Spanish, I realized that later, but I mean it's EFLAC because this is the feminist encounter for Latin America and the Caribbean. But here you have it in English, and this happened in Argentina in 1990, and that meeting, well, these are periodic meetings, for example, next year we will have a 15th meeting, we've already had 10 meetings after that agreement in 1990, and well, it was decided to declare the 28th of September as a day of joint action for decriminalization and legalization of abortion, and that case it was for the region latin america and the caribbean but this is a global cause and we this was related to the with the maternal mortality causes and complications in unsafe practices for abortion so and I'm sure these are things that do not just happen in Latin America and the Caribbean, and that is why in 2011, the Women's Global Network for Reproductive Rights declared the 28th of September as an international day and began to motivate activities in the other regions and continents around the world. And the dates that you have here, this is the last year. We, I'm sorry again, I have allergies, but uh, this campaign, we had events in 85 countries, there was 400 actions, and we were able to reach 12 million people approximately, so this is the last action or 2021. Here I have some sources of information and some actions. You have the official web page for the international campaign. 
Here you have the history, it's in English, it's done by the ECIWRSA, and here we have the Women's Global Network for Reproductive Rights that finally declares that this date should be international. Here, this is Latin America and the Caribbean, and this is some of the things that we are doing in 2018, 2019, 2020. In, the 20, in 2020, we had a festival for free abortion. Here you have a summary of the 20th of September campaign and the Red Salud virtual room. Some of these things are in English. And here you have a picture of the last protest that we had in the 20th of December here in Uruguay last year, where we were in front of the House of Parliament or the legislative power in Uruguay, because there were many laws that were being approved that were not necessarily against abortion, but they did imply certain setbacks like discussing whether you're a person from the moment of conception. And there's a law about mortinate or the burial of fetuses, but this is, well, this was a law meant for people who have miscarriage so that they could have access to to have the fetus be buried, but then another things were tagged on to that and then defining when it was a fetus and, and when it became a fetus, four weeks, three weeks, seven weeks, 12 weeks, and the burial is not just done by the woman, but it can be done by other family members like grandparents or cousins that would like to access the fetus or the embryo and that's beyond and it went beyond the will of the women in rome there is a fetus cemetery that has the name of the women that were pregnant and lost that pregnancy or in this case the mothers because well, so these are things that are happening here in Uruguay, and maybe it may look strange here. This is uh, referring to the Handmaid's Tale. This is a book, a novel that became a series. I recommend it. It is connected with abortion rights movements and in general sexual and reproductive rights. It's, it's a dystopia, of course, uh, where they propose a very conservative traditional system that prioritizes re forced reproduction, meaning that the women that are fertile will find themselves in situations where they're forced to become pregnant. And there's a big setback in rights where women don't have access to their bank accounts. They need their husbands to uh, sign for contraceptive medication, things that are happening. And this series shows us how we can't rest in our fight. This is something that is happening in Uruguay. We are, well, this year, it's 10 years since we've had legal abortions and we're finding a lot of things that we have to fight, especially with women's rights and especially sexual and reproductive rights. So things are never static. Things do not, not change. There's always a risk of setback. So we have this intervention so that we have some influence. I didn't want to talk about other countries and use pictures that weren't adequate. So the simplest thing that I could do to show you some actions is show you a picture from Uruguay. And of course, here you can 
read about that action. These are other days that are related to the feminist movement involving abortion rights movements. And these are May 28, World Day of Action for Women's Health, the 28th of September, like we just mentioned. November 25th, this is the day against violence against women. These dates were defined in different meetings, in different encounters for feminist movements. And I wanted to mention them so that you have an idea about the processes that happen. Here I'm saying a five minute break, but I'm not going to use it because it's already 20 past the hour. So we're about to run out of time and I don't want to go over my time to respect your time and the time that is dedicated to this workshop. And also, I don't want this to be tedious, but of course, if anyone wants to make a comment or ask a question, or if you want to tell me that I'm going too fast, please open up the mic as we have our colleague Apurva do. And of course, make your comment. And you can also raise your hand. And of course, I'm very open to any contributions that you would like to make. So this is the question. What are the challenges facing abortion, the abortion rights movements? And here we have the two main challenges, well, universal quality access to free, legal, safe abortion that is free of charges, again, free for all women and persons with the capability of becoming pregnant without uh, considering age, uh, economic class, ethnicity or race, education level, condition, sexual or orientation or gender identity, and this should be everywhere around the world. So this is still a challenge for the abortion rights movements. Getting this, overcoming this main challenge is, of course, within our perspective, because the movements, the abortion right movements are international with international dates and international campaigns and with everything i mentioned at the beginning all of these instances to produce knowledge all of these show how this cause is international and then on the other hand here i have this is a challenge that we still face and the green wave for example was how this uh, challenge became material real and the green wave doesn't just happen in latin america and the caribbean it also reached europe and the united states this was a significant explosion and i have images in australia of those of the green and the legal abortion, but it's still a challenge. And that is to expand social mobilizations to defend the right to decide mainly and reproductive and sexual autonomy and also respect and recognize sexual and reproductive rights as human rights and internationally still not recognized as such as i would say again i apologize for my allergies as i was saying in latin america and the caribbean with the montevideo consensus we have we do have this recognition but it's not in the un for example here we have some others some other challenges to consider. These are more internal for the movements, and that is to create the demand for abortion, but to join the broader sexual and reproductive rights agenda, human rights agenda, and in general, agendas related to the economic aspects, social and gender justice. 
it's important to not just address the abortion agenda, but to bring together the different uh, agenda because there's intersections. Uh, I mean, labor rights are related to abortion rights, public health, or the right to education. This is not an agenda that is separate from everything else that you fight along. Other social movements are also part of the feminist movement or the abortion rights movement. So the abortion rights movement is also part of other social movements for social transformation. So we need to know how to create a unity in agendas to strengthen the fight and to allow us to have wins. Also, the companionship and support to women and uh, women or pe persons with the capability of becoming pregnant, this challenge that has happened around the world, this challenge of providing companionship, companions for abortions, also expanding the social base to defend this public agenda, training spaces such as this one, spaces where we can have intergenerational dialogues, meaning that we can talk to all of the generations. All of the generations that are part of this movement can hold dialogues so that we can learn about the different processes that already existed to talk to the people that founded different organizations, those who were pushing the different campaigns in our countries and in our regions. Promoting this dialogue is very important. Let's not just have a dialogue amongst young people or a dialogue amongst what we call the veterans, the ones that built the movement. We should be able to connect within the movements amongst the different generations and also develop alliances with other movements or allies or significant stakeholders, generate new narratives and work on synergies with advocacy or public actions. And we should do this locally in our town or city, at a national level in our countries, regionally in our continents, and internationally in instances such as this one that are very important. And finally, this challenge that is what we in Uruguay call advancing in democracy to challenge the different democracies and not conform to expand our democratic horizon. And that is a characteristic of the abortion rights movement to expand the democratic horizons or expand the idea of what it is to have the right to decide and to have body autonomy and autonomy over our lives and how we're gonna continue living in this world and to be able to challenge the transformation processes when there is social transformation, when there is local level or regional transformation in different arenas to challenge those transformative processes. I don't mean of criticizing destructively of saying you didn't include this you didn't mention that no uh, uh, but i think a transformation idea has to include sexual and reproductive rights and abortion and that is part of the challenges that we have as a movement and here we shouldn't just talk about the challenges, but also the risks that we face as a movement. So this is for Latin America and the Caribbean, but it does connect to Europe. So I thought this was interesting. This is something that happened last week. 
if you didn't know about this, anytime I can, especially for this training instances where we with peers where we can exchange ideas, I'd bring this up because I think it causes concern. And this is the anti-abortion and anti-gender movement, especially in Latin America and the Caribbean. Last year, there was a group of young people that were educated by the European ultra-right. This is one of the most radical rights in Europe, Vox in Spain. I'm sure you know about it, Law and Justice in Poland. This is like, uh, yeah, Law and Justice, Civic Union in Hungary, and the National Front in France. If you don't know about these, I recommend that you look the map, look up these stakeholders and keep an eye on what they are doing in Europe. So they train these young people. This is a picture, I don't, you can look it up later. They were trained to strengthen their leadership capabilities and to generate and strengthen this connection uh, with the other side of the Atlantic. This was, this training had addressed attacking abortion regulations. And I want to mention this because these are things that do happen that we cannot ignore that are part of the challenges that are part of more like the risks that we face in terms of anti-abortion and anti-gender movements. And here, so you can investigate a little more. We can look at sexuality policy. Watch, this was a study in Latin America and the Caribbean. It's in English over here. It's in the middle, so it's more accessible. And there's a summary of all these different national studies that were made about the anti-gender movements and their policies in the different countries. Here we have the one from Uruguay that has a different picture, but it's the same study. And then we have the Abemus Gender. I wasn't able to find it in English, but it does exist in English because this is a translation actually. I tried to find it in English, but I do want to let you know that it does exist. And this is from the, the Catholic Church and the gender ideology. This is a concept that they are using to fight feminist movements, sexual diversity movements, and abortion rights movements. Here you have La Mala Fe. This is a magazine in Latin America. And they do a lot of research about the right, ultra-right, and anti-abortion movements. And here is the anti-abortion. And this is related to articles and books about anti-abortion movements from IPAS. Now, talking about the risks, we are talking about criminalization of companionships. I don't know if you know about this, but this is a case of Justina. We're asking to support her. She is an abortion companion in Poland. At the beginning of the pandemic, she accompanied a woman that had been a victim of gender violence that wanted to have an abortion. And well, for that woman, specifically her husband, forbade her to travel to leave Poland to have an abortion, as they do in many countries in Europe that have restrictive laws. So she contacted abortion without borders. She had the abortion in Poland and that put her at risk, but Justina accompanied her, provided information and supported her access to abortion medications. But today Justina is facing three years in prison and there was an international campaign to help Justina 
to show the strength that the abortion rights movements have. We are together and we make sure that these precedents are do not continue, meaning they could imprison so that they release Justina, but also do not have these situations that are trying to instill fear or rejection towards the movement. They're trying to criminalize this specific case of accompaniment, but also other things related to abortion rights. And to finish, I'd like to leave you with this question. I wanted to leave this as an open question so that we could have an exchange before the workshop, but this is so the question is why should young people be at the center of abortion rights movements? Well, in the center or participating or however you perceive it, I'm gonna leave this question open. And of course the mic is open for whoever wants to participate. I'll just leave the question up for a second, but I would like to stop sharing uh, my screen so that we can look at each other and not be looking at a PowerPoint. Why should young people be at the center of abortion rights movements? Somebody would like to, to answer that question? Estamos como con timidez, con dificultades para. I think we're being shy. I think uh, we're having some problems sharing. It's just the last minutes of this workshop. And if you do not want to answer the question, if you want to also make another comment, of course, I welcome that. If you want to ask something, something that wasn't clear, of course, you're uh, welcome to do that too. Yes, Trisa. Yeah. Go ahead, Trisa. Hey. I feel like. Uh... It's really important to engage young people to be at the center of um, abortion rights movement because uh, as it stands, people won't stop having sex. Um, and then um, we have to carry on with uh, when we are talking about issues concerning sexual reproductive health and discrimination we need to we are talking of young people we are affected with these issues uh, when we are advocating for issues of reproductive health services in our areas communities countries it's not enough we are making a gap we are not talking everything that is in need young people are affected we are affected because we are limited to have access in safe abortion and a lot of young people are dying. So we need to be at the center of this right movement on safe abortion so that we can project our generation, people around and uh, talking of issues of uh, family planning system. We need to be at the forefront advocating Young people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, here, choice our voice as young people must be heard, and we are the ones facing the issues, therefore, understanding them.
best. Young people are the ones facing most of these barriers to safe abortion service. And we have Ivan. You raise your hand. Hey, thanks, Tim. <laughs> thanks so much for the discussions. And honestly, if we really look at what we are aiming at, we are aiming at young people in general. And when they are brought on board, seriously, there's a room we have been since this structure started, we started with issues of stigma and not expressing themselves. But when they are brought on board, we shall have first left out the issue for stigma. They will be on board one. Um, they will be able to express what they really feel is right and what they really feel wrong is. So when whenever a young person is expressing what they don't and they like, and whenever they bring out their don'ts and likes, it gives you the, another chance of expressing what could be the best solution for them. So the other issue is running out of stigma. They wash away that issue. Secondly, they get more skills and uh, on how to, 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 to submit or work out with what is on. Remember that the young people we are targeting and for them, they will feel interested. They will feel in the system already ready to express what they are feeling. Secondly, to learn more about what they're supposed to learn. And above all, I think we shall be eliminating much of the barriers. I think we shall be eliminating such a kind of issues of sex harassment and other combining issues. I think all those barriers will be majorly handled in such kind of a case. So as we encourage more, I think we should really encourage these young people to be on the centers for such activities. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am uh, here, Sarina. Young people are the driving and motivating, I, I'm sorry, sorry, motivating force of the abortion rights movement. We are the ones who will continue the discussion, the discussion of abortion rights and fight for the sustainability of the movement that was started by fellow feminist and women rights groups. Young people are also experience a lot of barriers in accessing uh, sexual rights and mm, no sexual and reproductive health and rights. So it is important that young people also take up the space to hear um, to be heard and support and be part of this movement to be able to address the issues we face. Well, thank you very much for all your your comments and your participation. I agree with with with, with what you were saying. Y vuelvo a hablar en español, así que I'll go back to Spanish. I hope that you can hear the translation now. Well, it's just easier for me reading and I can read and I can hear, but speaking, especially now during the pandemic, I wasn't practicing, so I lost my English skills. But anyway, it's been a pleasure. I think it's very important and I agree with everything that you were saying about why young people should be at the center of the movement. I left this as an open question because I, I don't know, I had many questions when I was trying to answer it. So I was thinking, should I be the center? Should it just be participation? Should I be promoting active participation or strengthening the spaces of youth organizations that I think are very important right now, especially with the explosion of youth participation, not just in abortion rights movement, but in different social movements in general, such as the feminist movement that brings more young people together that have to be heard, that have to have a space and that, well, we're clearly the ones that will have to make this movement sustainable. Well, the ones that are going to continue promoting them and also educating 
new young people because we won't be young for the rest of our lives. I mean, this is just a stage that will pass. So, so that's the idea. That's the ideas behind my presentation. So if you have any comments, well, we're already running out of time. So, well, I'm available to answer any doubts. And of course, you can ask later. I have made or I will be making this PDF document available so that my colleagues can share it with you so that you can access the links that I have in there. And if you have other source of information or other networks, maybe you can circulate them amongst yourselves. And well, I'm at your disposal. So any questions or any comments? And if you ever come to Latin America or the Caribbean, I'm at your disposal. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. It's a pleasure to hear all your contributions. And well, again, if anyone wants to make a comment right now, or maybe we can close. So I now leave the floor to Shruti. Thank you so much, Tamara. It was it was very interesting and a great session. Thanks so much. I just wanted to say before we close that it will be good to stay connected. This was one of the last sessions that we also conducted in the workshop series and we would like to stay connected. So uh, if it is okay, I can also circulate some of the emails that uh, we've been sharing between ourselves and we can always find ways to stay connected. So it could be, you know, maybe creating a WhatsApp group, but I know there are a lot of WhatsApp groups also already. So uh, we can explore that and I will circulate an email regarding that. But uh, yeah, I, I will also share your presentation with all the participants. It was quite interesting. And some of the images that you used were actually uh, very, very powerful. So thank you so much. <laughs>